Greetings and welcome to the AIM Immunotech conference call. It is now my pleasure to introduce your host, CEO, Tom Equals. Thank you, Mr. Equals. You may begin. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us and for your interest in AIM Immunotech. Um, uh, I'd like to uh, first introduce you to uh, slide number two, which is our forward-looking statement and disclosures. Uh, please review that. We're a public company. And as such, uh, we are required to make this uh, uh, disclosure. And I also ask you to look at our K uh, filing as well as, as our Qs for the various disclaimers and disclosures contained therein. Uh, move now to slide number three, which uh, deals with the COVID-19 global pandemic. Um, many of you who have followed our company know that we've put a great deal of emphasis in two areas of research and development and, and have been making very strong progress, uh, um, specifically in a disease called ME-CFS or chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, we've obtained approval, full commercial approval in Argentina, and also uh, we have completed phase three trials. Uh, the FDA uh, has a new drug application before it and has requested confirmatory phase three trials in chronic fatigue syndrome, but also uh, has authorized us to operate compassionate care clinics uh, providing amplogen to severe chronic fatigue syndrome patients uh, in the U.S. Additionally, we've undertaken over the past three years a massive uh, immuno-oncology program supplying amplogen, uh, not just uh, initially experimentally, but not just experimentally, but we are now engaged in numerous significant clinical trials at major institutions, cancer research institutions in the United States, so that uh, 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 we are making great inroads there as well. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but we've had to uh, stop uh, for a moment to add a new player uh, to our research and development, and that is because of the pandemic that we now face, COVID-19. You see here uh, on this slide that there are almost 2 million cases and 125,000 deaths. Uh, a month from now, that'll probably be doubled, and it, it's a very serious uh, uh, problem, and we have something to contribute, we believe, so we've made that a part of our repertoire as well. Now, why amplogen, and, and, and why are we getting involved? Well, the, the primary reason is that the uh, virus that causes the disease COVID-19 is extremely similar to the virus which caused the SARS outbreak in 2002 and 2003. The, um, uh, <clears throat> that initial SARS outbreak, which was very serious, uh, but was contained, uh, was caused by a virus known as SARS-CoV-1. Uh, we uh, did studies that were National Institutes of Health contract studies conducted uh, uh, principally by uh, Professors Day and Barnard uh, at uh, uh, Utah State University and the University of North Carolina. And in those studies, uh, it was found that amplogen in one study reduced the uh, virus uh, levels in the lungs of the mice that were being used uh, to below detectable levels. And in the 2009 study, uh, amplogen, compared to a number of other antivirals, was the only one that provided 100% protective survival. Now, protective survival means it, it creates a prophylaxis effect. Uh, knowing this uh, from these previous studies, uh, once we saw the nature of the outbreak in China, um, we uh, were able to obtain from Japan's National Institute of Infectious Disease, the regulatory sequences of the new virus and compared uh, that at their request, uh, compared that to the SARS-1 virus and saw striking similarities. 
And based upon those similarities, as well as the, the pathogenesis of the disease, the nature of the disease, and the similarities in pathogenesis, uh, we determined that we needed to launch into research related to COVID-19 and this SARS, what is now known as the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Uh, it's called SARS-CoV-2 uh, primarily because of the similarities to the uh, SARS-1 virus. Now, um, that having been said, uh, uh, we, uh, I'd like to explain where we see amplogen as having potential. Now, now, there are really two areas. One is therapeutic, the other is a, is as a vaccine adjuvant, and I'll discuss those separately. We believe that amplogen, based upon the experimental work showing 100% protective survival, may have great potential as a prophylaxis. Now, why is a prophylaxis important? A prophylaxis protects people from getting the disease. Think of it like this. Uh, uh, you, you wear masks and goggles and protective gear and gloves so that you don't come in contact with disease. So those, the, that's protective equipment from the outside that protects you. Uh, a, a drug like Amplogen, if it works in humans the same way it worked in uh, the animal experiments for SARS-1, uh, protects you from the inside out so that that if you had no equipment and you were uh, and you had an effective uh, uh, prophylaxis, you would be able to avoid infection. Now, uh, we also uh, believe that there's uh, potential as an early onset therapeutic. So we are moving very aggressively uh, to do the research, experimental, preclinical, and clinical, uh, uh, to establish both of those concepts. Now, um, with regard to clinical trials, we are working out protocols. Uh, those protocols that uh, we're working out um, in terms of the protocol schemas are under a review with the uh, United States Food and Drug Administration. Um, uh, we are also uh, seeking, uh, in addition to the U.S. trials, uh, making inroads to conduct trials in China. Japan, Argentina, and the Netherlands. Um, these trials would be uh, what we, if we hope uh, very similar to the trials that we're designing for the United States. Um, uh, we anticipate that the trial participants would be people at higher risk of COVID-19 infection uh, or uh, uh, persons who would have complications from COVID-19. That would be like healthcare workers who are regularly exposed or for example, the elderly and patients with cancer, where if they are exposed and infected, would have greater risk of uh, serious symptoms and mortality. Now, um, in, in pursuing that, uh, we uh, very quickly in January recognized the uh, seriousness of the coronavirus epidemic that uh, we now call COVID-19. Um, based on that, we began analyzing the prior research, and uh, subsequently, I think on February 6th or early February, filed provisional patent applications for amplogen as a prophylaxis and early onset thera uh, therapeutic, as well as uh, as a vaccine adjuvant for a universal type coronavirus vaccine. And in in uh, furtherance of the the business part of Moving forward in these different areas, we engage China Go Abroad to facilitate preclinical and clinical trials uh, of amplogen with entities in the People's Republic of China, which at that time was where the principal uh, focus of the outbreak was. Um, we also uh, began working from the very beginning with the uh, National Institute of Infectious Disease in Japan. In fact, uh, they're the ones who provided us uh, initially with the genetic sequence of the new virus and requested that we uh, assist them as, as, uh, as well as our own uh, 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 answering our own questions in doing a comparison analysis between the two viruses, SARS-1 and SARS-2, 
which we did, and, and, and based on those striking similarities, we, we moved forward very quickly. Um, and also, uh, in conjunction with our work with China Go Abroad, uh, we've agreed to commence research with uh, SMORE Technologies, who is uh, a uh, worldwide uh, uh, premier uh, manufacturer of inhalation therapy devices, personal inhalation therapy devices, uh, principally uh, related to vaping devices, but also uh, they're, they're making a very strong uh, effort to develop high-tech, highly efficient personal medical inhalation devices. So uh, that's, that's what we're doing as we move forward. Um, uh, and, and our focus is on the therapeutic aspect of uh, amplogen and amplogen's potential uh, as a, an antiviral therapeutic in COVID-19 uh, is something that we're going to pursue, uh, as I said, as aggressively as possible. Um, uh, and uh, we're, we believe we're making steady inroads. Now, um, I'd like to refer you to slide eight, which uh, has a discussion about amplogen as a broad spectrum antiviral. I think that this, this uh, slide deck, amplogen as an antiviral, is on our website. Please uh, review that at your leisure. Uh, but it shows you that amplogen, because it's, a, it's an, uh, an immunotherapy uh, that creates an immune response in the innate immune system, uh, it, it is able to uh, deal with a number of different viral threats, because the, the, this is how the body responds to viruses. Uh, but it also gives us great broad spectrum potential in COVID-19. So uh, look at that as, as you uh, get a chance. Now, um, I'd like to move to slide nine, which is discussing amplogen's uh, potential advantages as a vaccine enhancer. Um, and, and this is based upon work that we did with Japan's National Institute of Infectious Disease related to influenza. Um, and then we followed up with human trials in influenza at the University of Alabama to establish intranasal safety. But all of these principles, we believe, may uh, also apply in coronavirus uh, vaccination. And, and what's very important here to recognize is this coronavirus, COVID-19, you know, may be difficult to achieve an effective vaccine. So having a vaccine adjuvant that uh, amplifies the effect of the vaccine as well as uh, creates, uh, if we can create the same uh, phenomenon that was observed in influenza, where you see epitope spreading, uh, cross-reactivity and cross-protection, we believe, could result in um, uh, something that uh, in, a, in a vaccine program has the potential to uh, vaccinate not just against the particular strain of the virus that the vaccine is based upon, but uh, any mutations of that virus or even, you know, different uh, clades of a particular virus. Now, um, I, I mentioned at the beginning that one of our big emphasis is, as a company is in immuno-oncology. We have not stopped our work in immuno-oncology. Um, uh, everybody seems to be, you know, uh, excited and focused on what we're doing in COVID-19. But in terms of, of true long-term substantial value, uh, the work we're doing in oncology now is extremely important. Uh, we, are, we are at major cancer centers uh, engaged in clinical trials funded by major players. And, and each of these clinical trials is based upon uh, major grant money from, from other parties, of uh, National Cancer Institute, Department of Defense, uh, industry grants from big pharma companies. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, we have a lot of interest in oncology and success in any one of these highly lethal malignancies where there are unmet medical needs uh, creates great value, we believe, uh, for AIM and stockholders. But more importantly, it creates the potential for a cure for people who have no hope 
in uh, lethal malignancy. Now, as you can see on this slide, uh, we, we talk about uh, advanced uh, recurrent ovarian cancer. We have two trials, one a phase one, phase two, which is wrapped up and we're waiting for uh, publication of the data from the University of Pittsburgh. Obviously, the pandemic is disrupting things at these cancer centers in terms of uh, priority, so they have to give priority to uh, cancer patients who are at a greater risk uh, than most uh, from infection. Um, so that may slow down our projections on when those reports come out, but, but we believe that uh, that's in the works. Um, and you'll see at the bottom uh, a phase two this is a fully funded 45-subject uh, phase two trial, which is Amplogen plus Keytruda um, at the University of Pittsburgh in advanced recurrent ovarian cancer. So that's moving along uh, steadily as we go. We also have uh, colorectal uh, metastatic to the liver. We have metastatic triple negative breast cancer uh, going on. Uh, again, metastatic triple negative breast cancer uh, involves tens of thousands uh, of uh, uh, people, uh, principally women, uh, with uh, 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 highly lethal malignancy for which there, there's just no medical um, uh, cure available uh, for those persons. Additionally, we have trials uh, going on for early stage prostate cancer, early stage triple negative breast cancer, refractory metastatic colorectal carcinoma and refractory melanoma. Um, the, the, uh, a couple of these are uh, where the INDs are approved but haven't started enrollment, but for the most part in, in uh, the majority of the ones that I've just discussed, enrollment's already underway uh, and first treatment has been provided. And we have a few on deck uh, as well. If you look at slide 12, and, and it's our intention to move very quickly with those studies as grant money is obtained, or in some instances, we may do pilot studies uh, funded uh, by AIM uh, Immunotech. Now, <clears throat> what, what's important to note here is, like I said, the, we have uh, major funding um, uh, of the oncology studies that uh, supports all this research that we're doing. And, we believe success in any of these, uh, these trials uh, creates great value. Uh, for example, uh, recently, and I, I mean over the past month, uh, 14 point, approximately $14.5 million uh, in grant money was awarded to Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center uh, to test uh, Amplogen as a, a critical part of the chemokine modulation therapy, uh, and, and that will involve a number of uh, major malignancies, and uh, just several months ago, the Department of Defense issued approximately $15 million in grant money to Roswell Park and Moffitt Cancer Center in Florida, they're our neighbor just a few miles to the south of our headquarters, uh, to uh, 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 give them what are called breakthrough award grants, uh, testing again, Amplogen is a part of a therapy process for brain metastatic breast cancer. Now, um, with regard to COVID-19, and of course, oncology, I think it's important to note that we have a leg up in our ability to move forward because principally from our work in chronic fatigue syndrome and a massive phase three clinical trial that was uh, uh, undertaken, uh, we have an extremely well-developed safety profile. That involves uh, approximately 100,000 IV doses administered to humans, hundreds of human subjects. And we also um, uh, have uh, numerous uh, amplogen as an infusion therapy clinical trials that are currently authorized by the FDA and are underway right now, those cancer trials I mentioned. Uh, we have a full commercial approval for amplogen as an infusion therapy by the Republic of Argentina for severe chronic fatigue syndrome. Additionally, um, uh, we, we have uh, uh, Amplogen being used in uh, two clinical programs in the United States uh, where Amplogen is being provided as a compassionate care or open label program and authorized by the FDA. 
And finally, and very important with some of these internasal programs that we have underway, including our prophylactic and vaccine program for COVID-19, we had previously cleared phase one testing uh, for intranasal inhalation and installation therapy uh, in an influenza study that we conducted at the University of Alabama. Now, to wrap up on the presentation, um, uh, here's a, uh, a slide uh, that gives you an idea of, of what, you know, what our present, uh, well, I say present, uh, at the end of the quarter, 331, uh, uh, condition was in terms of uh, outstanding uh, shares, that's approximately 28 million, and uh, uh, significantly cash. Uh, we ended uh, March with a little bit over $30 million in the bank. Now, why is this important? It's important because what that tells us is that we have the resources to complete these oncology studies, uh, which could create a great opportunity if we're successful. And it gives us the resources to move forward aggressively uh, with uh, uh, our COVID-19 work. We have to remember that we're a very small company competing with all the big boys to try and get lab space and opportunities for our experimental work and things like that, and, and that will require resources. But what this slide tells you is that we do have those resources available. With that being said, I thank you very much. And that concludes our presentation. And uh, at this point, if there's any questions, uh, I'm happy to entertain uh, some of the questions. Thank you, Tom. Um, we do have a common question coming in from investors, and that is, when will AIM investors see news about Japan? Well, um, uh, I can't give a precise date because I don't have control of, of the experimental activity that's taking place uh, in Japan, but we, we've, uh, we've shipped Amplogen uh, to Japan. Uh, we've provided, uh, 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 through funding, uh, access to cell lines, uh, which have to be purchased by the National Institute of Infectious Disease, but we're funding those or reimbursing for those purchases of the cell lines. And of course, uh, uh, the, the lab space uh, has to be obtained. We're trying to work out protocol, uh, protocols for the initial in vitro experimentation. Uh, we, we have every reason to believe with, that within a month and a half, we should have those initial in vitro experiments completed. And, we're, and what we're trying to replicate is uh, the uh, protective survival experiments that were conducted and, and uh, similar to that mentioned earlier in my presentation done by Dr. Barnard and Dr. Day, uh, where you saw the, the viral load in the lung drop to undetectable levels, and you saw 100% protective survival in those animals as compared to a control group with 100% mortality. So that uh, all the all the uh, mice that were infected with SARS-1 died. All the mice that had amplogen applied shortly before infection uh, not only survived but survived with with uh, minimal symptoms. So the, uh, uh, the that's what we're doing in terms of the initial experimental work in Japan. And obviously we're we're trying to uh, uh, at the same time develop clinical trial. Uh, activity in Japan with regard to the prophylactic, which is a very important public health initiative because that helps our healthcare workers, uh, at highly high risk patients, uh, people who are known to have been uh, exposed uh, to have an opportunity to avoid catching the disease. Our early onset therapeutic activity, which is where you know somebody's been exposed and infected quickly provide amplogen uh, as a uh, therapy. Uh, we believe that has great potential and, and we want to work that in, in Japan as well. As well as uh, Japan is, 
is where this concept of the universal influenza vaccine uh, was originally uh, developed in an experimental bottle by Japan's National Institute of Infectious Disease and Dr. Hasegawa, you know, and we're working very hard to uh, also move forward in the coronavirus space with that concept in Japan. Uh, if uh, there are any other questions related to Japan, I'm happy to answer them. But I think first results will be, uh, just to sum it up, uh, we'll see something in a month and a half. And, and, uh, and you know, the, uh, it may, may take a little bit longer for the animal experiments just due to the availability of animals uh, that are uh, animal models that are suited to this particular virus and then in lab space. And then uh, obviously as clinical trials uh, are approved and underway, those will be announced uh, immediately uh, uh, upon um, authorization by the various governmental entities. Thanks, Tom. Uh, that's all we have time for today. So I'll turn it to you for any closing remarks. Well, I just want to say that uh, at AIM Immunotech, uh, we have a motto. It's immunology for a better future. And, and uh, you know, much of our work has been in the field of uh, unmet medical needs and oncology, you know, highly lethal malignancies for people who have no hope, trying to provide them uh, with a, a therapy uh, through activation of the immune system that will create a cure for their cancers. Uh, but but COVID-19 goes right to the heart of our motto, immunology for a better future. If we don't address pandemic diseases like, pan, uh, like COVID-19 with all of our energy and, and all of our talent, um, our future could be very dark. So uh, we are just one of thousands of research and development um, uh, uh, companies and scientists and doctors that are doing our best, even our small part, to contribute to a better future by dealing with this pandemic. Thank you very much. This concludes today's webcast. You may disconnect at this time. Thank you for your participation.